Kia ora tato. Hello everyone. This video is about the basics of outputting and compositing AOVs. They allow fine control over images and video sequences. I'm going to preface this by saying that if you don't need to do this, then definitely don't. Um, it's extra work. I really like what it gives me, but if you don't need to do it, then don't do it. I've been using AOVs a lot for creating images. Uh, comping an image together is a lot looser and freer than compositing videos. The workflow concepts are still the same, but you have to be a lot more disciplined and even sterile in the way that you apply this workflow. The image that I compiled and composited is based off an awesome illustration by Mako, who goes by the Twitter handle Blurring My Day and also has prints available on inprint.com. Here's a glimpse of the simplified materials. Now for this example, I've disabled displacement and decreased the rendering samples for the sake of time. Uh, one of the things I've done is to make multi submaterials for different groups of objects, such as the character and the stone objects. Arranging materials like this aids in creating clean material AOVs when using crypto mats, which I'll be showing later. For the actual render, I create AOVs using Arnold's new dialogue. This new dialogue has been laid out really nicely and it's simple to add all the useful basic AOVs you need. Uh, the only AOV I'm going to search for is the background and after that is added, I'll rename the EXR to GPU AOVs and this will become the file name that is output. I'm using the GPU feature of Arnold. With dual GPUs, I've found that it's rendering up to four times faster. Uh, there are some things that you can't do with the GPU, and in this case I'm going to show how I optimize and render a second pass solely for the CPU-based AOVs. Uh, through the magic of editing, I've jumped ahead and the GPU rendering is done, so I've optimized the scene for the second pass. Basically, I added a standard material to everything except the foliage objects. I want to keep the opacity maps for things like leaves, so I didn't touch them in this case. But what I have done is set all of my samples to zero except the camera AA, and this is going to speed things up a lot. I don't need to save a file here. Instead, I want to just set up an output from the AOV dialog. What I'm going to add is just the crypto material AOV. I'm going to rename the output. Back in the render setup, I just need to add the crypto map map to the AOV shaders, and now I'm ready to render. You can see that the CPU render is just flying through this image because there's not a lot to it. In the end, what is saved is a material AOV that'll give me useful selection masks for my post work. So let's composite this in Photoshop. First of all, you'll need this free image reader called EXR in out. Uh, that is where the magic happens. You simply drop in the EXR and you'll find all the AOVs are visible in the layers panel. All you need to do is select all the valid layers and set them to add mode. Uh, what you'll see is all the layers have come together and perfectly match the final render. The EXR is 32-bit and while the value range is like top stuff, the image depth means that uh, you can't use certain adjustment layers. So what I'll do is when I'm ready with my layers, I'll copy a flattened version over to a 16-bit canvas and keep working there. In this example, I'm bringing in the crypto mat. Check out all of these useful selections. I'm going to take the water material over to my canvas and make a selection from it. If I add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, then automatically the selection becomes a mask and I can tweak the color of the water. Alright, moving on to After Effects. Like EXR in out, I'm using another free plugin and this one's called Pro EXR. This will give us the extractor effect if you don't already have it. I import the EXR and make sure that I'm using a 32-bit workspace. When I drop the extractor effect onto the EXR, you might find that the image gets darker, but for now, let's just proceed and see what this effect gives us. Uh, under the layer you can see all of the AOVs we created, so I'll duplicate the layer and change each AOV in that effect. Now in the end I'll select all the layers and change their modes to add. Now I'm going to put the untouched EXR onto the top and you'll see that the overall image is darker. I'm going to illustrate that with this mask. 
So if I add an adjustment layer with an exposure effect and change the gamma correction to 2.2, you'll see that this has pretty much solved the issue. The reason for this is that the working space color is not correct, so let's delete the adjustment layer and fix the problem in project settings. I'm going to use RGB here and it's important to tick linearize working space. As soon as I do that, the color space is shown correctly and we're finished stacking our AOVs. Uh, finally, for Nuke, uh, we don't need any plugins and I'll show how to manually composite the passes here. We create a read node and give it the EXR. If you create a layer contact sheet node, you can at least see that yes indeed, there are layers in this EXR, so let's extract them. I'll make a shuffle node and then select the AOV that I want, and then that's the first one. I know that there are seven AOVs, so I'll quickly make seven shuffle nodes and assign an AOV to each one. Now to add all of these together, I'll select the first two and press M on the keyboard to merge them together. What I need to do with the merge node is just to set the mode to plus, and then I select the merge and the next shuffle node. I'll merge each shuffle node and set it to plus mode. Then at the end, as I toggle between the final added node and the original EXR, you'll see that they match perfectly. And that's the end of the tutorial on how to output and composite basic AOVs using 3ds Max and Arnold.